following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Not a pretty sight, is it? No? Rat bites never are. But treating rat bites, or all the diseases rats cause, is one thing. Preventing them is another. That's where I come in. I'm Jeff Cannon. My job? Director of Rat Control for the City Health Department. At least that's my official title. Mostly, people simply call me the Rat Man. That's Bill Barnes just leaving. He's new on the job, but turning into a good rat man himself. And so is George Wilson there. Sometimes George and I work together, most times we don't. But either way, he's tops. Been at it 20 years. Another rat by Jeff? A baby again, Mercy Hospital. Multiple bites in face and hands. It shouldn't bother me after five or six years. Well, it should never happen. Well, don't let it get you down. Think of all the cases that don't happen because you're in there pitching. Well, as usual, our work was waiting. All cases of one kind or another that we have to investigate before we can send a crew out. Where? Most everywhere. We get the word from hospitals or the police, from homeowners, store owners or tenants, anybody who calls in for just one reason. He's got rest. No, sir. My mother wasn't home when the baby got bit. She worked, and I keep the baby. But if you were with the baby, how come? I mean, I just gave her a bottle. It, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I can't watch you every minute. You know, mister, the kids around here don't care. They don't care one bit. Did you hear about all those rats? Well, we sure got them around here. I can see that. And apparently the kids aren't the only ones who don't care. And that suits the rats just fine. Listen to the rat man. All they want is a place to live. A messy place. Where they can gnaw their way through doors or loose screens. Or jump right in through broken windows, holes around pipes or in the walls just enough room for a runaway between their food and their shelter. A place to borrow into the ground and come up inside a building. Enough rubbish to build their nest and have another litter in less than a month. And what they want most of all is enough to eat. There's an old saying in my business, if you're feeding them, they're your rats. They'll eat most anything too. Even spoiled food that would make people sick. To them, garbage is a well-balanced diet. And the closer that food is, the better. Rats don't like to travel far, or in the open, or in the daytime. Too dangerous. Just grab a quick meal and hide. That's the way they want it. Rats are smart. Okay, ma'am, I'll notify the owners, then get a crew out here to set up poison bait. Start doing some rat proofing. Meanwhile, you folks in the neighborhood better start cleaning up, or else these rats will have you out in the street. Well, I don't know. It sure ain't going to be easy, but we'll try. 
You know, they've always lived here and probably always will. Sure, they always live here. And why not? Almost like ringing the dinner bell for every rat in town. Exactly what they need and want to set up housekeeping. That's those steel drums for you. Too big for the city to handle. No lids. Shouldn't be used for garbage in the first place. Something the matter, rat man? Yes. That's the real mess you've got there. Why don't you get good cans with lids? Not my problem. I just live here. Sure. You just live here. You and the rats. Rats? Heck yeah, we got rats. Man, it's like I told you. I'm not the owner. I'm just the manager. Besides, ain't nothing I can do. Mister, I've given you two warning notices. Now you get a pen and a ticket. And once the owner pays the fine in court, you can bet he'll tell you to start acting like a real manager. Look, I don't want rats in my restaurant. You think I'm crazy? And if the city do its job, I wouldn't have them. The city does what it can. But the citizens in this thing, too. We can't keep house for you. This used to be a good place to live. Look at it now. Before these old rats started coming around. Don't blame the rats, lady. Don't blame anybody. Just keep in mind that it takes a bit of effort on everyone's part to keep a neighborhood clean and neat so you won't have rats. Oh, yes, there are thousands of rat bite cases every year. Most of them infants with food on their faces after eating or older persons. If we get them promptly for treatment, most wounds usually heal satisfactorily. Unfortunately, many victims also suffer from the agony and pain of rat bite fever. Biological warfare, rats versus the people. You betting on the people, George? Sure. Just the same as you are. Because like you say, it's war and it's everybody's business. It has to be. That's why more of them have got to join up. Right. And if cats were the rat catchers people think they are, we wouldn't be mixing tons of poison bait rat-proofing buildings, or forever holding clinics. Cats, dogs, what's the difference? They're not much better than traps, really. Like the butcher shop case. Well, that was before your time, yeah? It was over on the west side. And the butcher used traps, and he caught a rat now and then. So he figured he had the problem licked. Most people do. But man, the ones he didn't catch must have had a picnic every night. Why, with all those scraps, I wonder he ever caught a rat in his trap. This was all in the back room, of course. So the customers had no reason to suspect a thing. Not then, anyway. Most people expect places that handle food to be clean as a whistle. But they sure knew something was wrong when that food poisoning hit them. And I mean them. Men, women, kids. Why, that food was so contaminated from rat droppings left on his table, that butcher could have poisoned a small army. Top of losing his customers, he caught a good case of lepto all on his own. Probably some infected rat urine in the mop water got right into his system. Anyhow, he sure got the message. Leptospirosis, huh? Complete with chills, vomiting, muscular ache. That's pretty serious. You better believe it. I am Dr. C. Bruce Lee of the Research and Development Office of the Environmental Control Administration of the U.S. Public Health Service. We have with us today Mr. Harry D. Pratt, Chief of the Rodent Control Branch of the Environmental Control Administration. How are you, Mr. Pratt? Dr. Lee, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, we plan to use this motion picture in many places throughout the country where there is a rat problem, but particularly in the 20 cities uh, which are funded under the Partnership for Health program. Could you tell us something where these uh, cities are located? Well, as you can see on the map, these 20 cities are scattered from coast to coast, uh, including such very large cities as Chicago, Cleveland, 
New York, and Washington. How much money is the federal government allocating for this rat control program? Well, in the first year of the operations, the federal government has spent about $15 million, uh, particularly in places like Chicago, New York, and Baltimore, where there are existing programs, and in certain places like Atlanta and Nashville, uh, where the money is used to start new programs. Can you uh, tell us some information? Does the program cover an entire city? No, usually there's not enough money uh, to cover an entire city. Uh, so the work is concentrated for effective rat control in the low income area, quite often in the model cities or in the model neighborhood area. Now that's interesting. Uh, in these areas, who does the actual work on the uh, program? Well, each program mm -hmm. is planned and directed by trained engineers biologists or sanitarians with broad experience in insect and rodent control work and uh, very frequently uh, years of work with the health department. However, the majority of the workers are recruited from the inner city where the control work is being carried out. You mean to say that we have uh, people working on the program who have grammar school educations and who have been to high school? Are they working on these uh, activities? Yes, as you can see here, uh, some of these men are dropouts, or people who could not go further in school because of lack of money. However, they can be trained to do very fine work in a number of types of jobs, uh, such as collecting rubbish. Or they can be used to observe uh, rat signs. If you see on the corner of this door here, uh, rat's teeth grow four or five inches a year, and they can gnaw through many building materials, even lead pipe, with their sharp teeth. Notice along the edge of this building, a rat runway. Rats feel comfortable when they're using the same path day after day uh, between their homes and the source of food. These signs are very interesting of rats being about, but uh, what else do the men who are engaged in the program look for when they make an inspection? Well, of course, the most important thing we feel is the checking to see about refuse storage and uh, garbage. Uh, because garbage and refuse furnish the food uh, and nesting material uh, for the rat. It's amazing how many garbage cans have no bottoms or tops. There's no place for the bottomless or topless fad in refuse storage. Well, since we have no place for the bottomless or topless fad in refuse storage, uh, what do the control workers do when they find uh, garbage cans which are unsatisfactory? Well, of course, the first thing they do is to come up and meet the uh, householder and try to get him to buy new garbage cans. Uh, they try to get rid of old appliances, old automobiles, places where rats would hide in the backyard. Uh, this is probably the most important thing that each householder could do, is to have good refuse storage on his own property. Well, this is important to know. We must have good Store, uh, storage places for refuge on property. Now, are rats confined to particular areas of a city? And this is discharged into the sewers. So these sewers then serve as a place where the rats can hide and they can travel. And of course, they can come up into some of our very best houses right through the floor drain. They can even crawl and swim through a toilet into our basement. Now, that's most amazing, and it sort of is chilling to think that even in my own home, I could have right. a rat coming in by this means. Uh, of course, I am interested in knowing what are the methods used for killing rats? How do you go about killing them? Well, of course, on the big city program, we use three types of rodenticides, that is, rat-killing chemicals. We use uh, the anticoagulants. We use red squill, and we use zinc phosphide. Now, the anticoagulants are a chemical uh, which is mixed usually with yellow cornmeal, this sort of thing here. Now, the rats must eat this for four or five days consecutively before their blood begins to lose the ability to clot or coagulate, hence the name anticoagulant. After this period of time, four or five days to a week or more, uh, they become weak and actually die painlessly from loss of blood. Now, there's a built-in safety factor. If your child, for instance, uh, should happen to eat this once, or your pet should eat this once, there's actually no danger uh, from one feeding, no sickness, no death. 
It must be eaten four or five days in a row. Well, it's good to know this, that there is this built-in safety factor, and uh, I'm pleased because I do have children. Now, I'm concerned, uh, what would I do if I found I had rats or mice about my house? Well, of course, if you had rats, the best thing to use are these anticoagulants because of this built-in safety factor. Now, they can be bought and used uh, in a yellow cornmeal mix. It's soft like this, but it tends to blow. So a number of manufacturers have made it in a pellet form, which does not blow around nearly as much. This comes probably in 50 or more different types of commercial formulation. This is fascinating to see the uh, packaging in which these poisons come. I remember as a child that they often said that a trap was best baited with a piece of cheese to tickle so a rat's nose it almost makes him sneeze. Now, is cheese the best bait to use for traps? Well, of course, most housewives feel that cheese is the best material to use in baiting a mouse trap. So it will be done like this. And of course, you put the trap on hair trigger. But actually, we have found that you can get just as many mice or more with uh, apple or peanut butter, a nut meat, or many other types of things that are in our houses, like bacon. Well, then what do you do about uh, rats in buildings, for instance? Well, of course, rats are much bigger. So we use essentially mm -hmm. the same type of snap trap. Uh, which we would set like this, and uh, you would put your bait here, and it would go like that. On the other hand, if this is the wall now, like this, we can sometimes trap the rats uh, by having an expanded trigger uh, of cardboard or metal, as you see here. Yes. And uh, you've got to be very careful, Dr. Lee, because uh, this is uh, something that could catch your finger very easily, as you see. Now, if this is the wall, we don't set the trap this way so that the rat comes in and is thrown away. We try to get it so that as the rat travels along the wall that way, why, it is caught, you see, as it goes across the treadle. Now, there's still another type of trap that we use that essentially is unbaited. This is called a steel trap. Now, this one, again, you can catch your finger in and have a real uh, good little wound. But if you use real caution and set it like this, and then you come under and set it at hair trigger, remembering that one jaw of the trap is free, why then you can do it. Now, if this is again the thing, we don't set it this way so that as the rat runs along, it's thrown out. You set it this way, and then as the rat comes along, it's caught in the trap, as you see there. These, then, are some of the things that we do as we uh, try to get rid of rats and mice in our house. Well, I'm glad to have you the person who's demonstrating these traps on the, on the uh, program. But what does all this mean to the average householder? Well, of course, to the average householder, uh, this means that uh, rats are something that they should try to get rid of uh, as quickly as possible. Now, let us look again at our motion picture and see a little bit more about the urban rat problem. So the rat is a stealthy, clever enemy. He can climb up wires and pipes, squeeze through half-inch holes, jump up and out three feet, jump down and out eight feet, even drop 50 feet and still survive. He starts fires, destroys food and valuables, contaminates even more. And when you multiply the damage of a single rat by the rat population of the U.S., about one rat for every two persons, the yearly loss skyrockets to more than a billion dollars. So how do you change the picture? By eliminating a rat here and there? Not a chance. You have to control the entire rat population. And the first step is to eliminate the one thing that supports any population, food. A single open garbage can, for example, will support just so many rats, no more. But add a few more messy cans, then the mess of a city block, plus that of an entire neighborhood, and suddenly you're supporting a king-sized rat population. Amen, Mr. Barnes. A lot of food, 
a lot of rats. Less food, less rats. No food, no rats. The way I see it, most people are so close to their rat problem, they overlook the most obvious solution, especially when they're blaming somebody else. So as always, it boils down to communication, to telling him point blank. Look, if you want to get rid of your rats, quit feeding him. Quit giving him hiding places. Rats won't stay in an area where they can't get food and shelter. So, when you take it away, you take away the rats. Here's the idea. See that? It's a jumbo-sized, always-closed container to handle a jumbo-sized garbage and rubbish problem. And it does just that. What's more, the city thinks it's great. To me, most excuses are a cover-up for doing nothing. But if anybody, a manager, owner or tenant, ever had reason to cover up, it's right inside his garbage can or outside of it. With just a bit of conscience, a bit of pride, and a bit of effort on everybody's part, people can get rid of their rats, and they will, if everyone keeps working at it. I mean that, every word of it. There's no doubt that the rat problem is serious in every city, large or small. We can't ignore it, and we can't wish it away, but we can do something about it each one of us. I'm betting on the people in this war on rats. How about you? Harry, your film says that the rat problem is serious in this country. Just how serious is the urban rat problem? Well, every big city has a rat problem. This varies, of course, with the age of the housing, with the uh, condition of the housing, and with the amount of food and harborage for rats. Now, in the map that we showed you before, in the 20 cities where we examined, uh, we found about 2,000 yards out of 12,000 carefully checked had signs of rats outside the home. This is roughly one-sixth or 16%. But even more important, 61% uh, of the blocks in these cities had at least one yard uh, with signs of exterior uh, rat signs outside the home. Uh, well, well, these uh, statistics, the few that you've given us, are most revealing. And I was wondering, does this, are these indications, do they give us any uh, way of knowing what steps you're making in uh, controlling rat, the rat problem? But we're making a rather sizable amount of uh, advanced success in cutting mm -hmm. down the number of rat bites and in cutting down the actual prevalence of rats in these cities. Uh, for instance, in New York City, uh, the number of rats uh, used to be reported uh, so that there were 600 cases of rat bites a year. Then in the five-year period from 63 to 67, uh, it dropped down to about 550 in 68 there were only 390 rat bites uh, reported in greater New York. And this year, we only know about 200 thus far. Well, this does indicate that there is progress. I can remember when I was a teacher many years ago, my children, when we were discussing rats, showed me fingers and noses and ears that had been bitten uh, by rats when they were babies. This brought home to me the importance of control measures. Now, I realize that much of the film that we've seen today has demonstrated the areas of town which we might say are poor, which are the, where people who live who don't have opportunities. However, rats are found everywhere, as you said. And one of the methods of control, I assume, is that we must get everybody to cooperate, meaning the tenants, the residents, and the people who own the property. It's got to be, a, it seems to me, a, a broad attack involving everybody who has anything to do with the environment in which rats are found. Would you agree to this? I would think that this is very definitely true, and that this very definitely has a bearing on another significant part of the rat problem, namely uh, about mental health and well-being. You take children that are brought up in the inner city, uh, very frequently uh, they grow up 
uh, without being able to sleep at night because the rats are up in the ceiling or they're gnawing in the wall. There's a fear of rats and of these ugly, disfiguring uh, scars. And in some work that we've done, uh, it seems to us that uh, the rats uh, are probably the number four cause of unrest and turmoil in the inner city, uh, following such things as human relations and poverty and unemployment. It's interesting to feel that an animal, a small animal, which has traveled with man from Asia to our country could be a definitive cause in unrest within our urban centers. My first experience was reading Hans Zinzer's book, Rats, Lice, and History. This is a rather old book, but it is still pertinent. It gives the history of man's reactions, his relationships to this pest, this neighbor of man who has followed without his asking man about the face of the earth from its origin in Asia. And I am more than pleased to realize that the Environmental Control Administration, the Public Health Service, has within it a program which is concerned with this rat control. Are there, uh, is there any information that uh, the viewers can secure concerning the uh, control measures, the, uh, the activities that are being undertaken in rat uh, control? Well, of course, we feel that this is a people problem and that we must have the people behind us. Now, New York has done this. They have made this sign seven things that every New Yorker should know about their neighbor. And this brings home to them very clearly uh, that these are definitely in their homes. We do a great deal of training with health departments all over the country, and we have recently uh, produced this book, Control of Domestic Rats and Mice, which is available through the government printing office. Uh, many health departments and other agencies are using this with pictures of rats and uh, trapping uh, of uh, rodenticides and uh, refuse storage, all these things. So go to your health department if you have a rat problem and get advice from your health department. Thank you so much for coming aboard to talk to us today, Harry. It's a pleasure. My pleasure.